just lift our hands to the great I am. Thank you, Jesus. He's wonderful. Amen. He is wonderful. Amen. He is wonderful. Amen. Amen. He is the mighty God, counselor, prince of peace is he. Hallelujah. Tonight, we just want to exalt him. Hallelujah. For being the God who keeps on making ways, right? Hallelujah. We exalt him. We adore him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. Made a way. Standing here. Not knowing how we'd get through this test. Thank you, Jesus. Holding on to faith, you know best. Nothing can catch you by surprise. You got this figured out. If you're watching us now, but when it looks as if we can't win.
perform miracles. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that's impossible. And we're standing here only because Hallelujah. You cause every single wall to fall your power. with your awesome power, Lord. Perform me. Perform miracles. There is nothing. There is nothing that's impossible. We're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because. Only because. Standing here only because, only because you made me, and we're standing here only because, only because you made me. We're standing here only because you made me, and we're standing here only because you made me. We're standing here only because. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. 
Lord, everybody. Tonight's scripture reading is taken from the book of Romans, and I'll be reading in your hearing from the Passion Translation. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, has done for us. Our faith guarantees us permanent access into his marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. What incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. But that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence, knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. And patient endurance will refine our character. And proven character leads us back to hope. And this is not a disappointing fantasy. Because we can now experience the endless love of God. Cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. For when the time was right... The Anointed One came and died to demonstrate His love for sinners who were entirely hopeless, weak, and powerless to save themselves. Now, who of us would dare to die for the sake of a wicked person? We can all understand if someone was willing to die for a truly noble person. But Christ proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. And there is still much more to say of his unfailing love for us. For through the blood of Jesus, we have heard the powerful declaration, you are now righteous in my sight. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus, you will never experience the wrath of God. So if while we were still enemies, God fully reconciled us to himself through the death of his son, then something greater than friendship is ours. Now that we are at peace with God, and because we share in his resurrection life, how much more we will be rescued from sin's dominion. And even more than that, we overflow with triumphant joy in our new relationship of living in harmony with God, all because of Jesus Christ. When Adam sinned, the entire world was affected. Sin entered human experience, and death was the result. And so death followed this sin, casting its shadow over all humanity because all have sinned. Sin was in the world before Moses gave the written law, but it was not charged against them where no law existed. Yet, death reigned as king from Adam to Moses, even though they hadn't broken a command the way Adam had. The first man, Adam, was a picture of the Messiah who was to come. Now, there is no comparison between Adam's transgression and the gracious gift that we experience. For the magnitude of the gift far outweighs the crime. It's true that many died because of one man's transgression, but how much greater will God's grace and his gracious gift of acceptance overflow to many because of what one man, Jesus the Messiah, did for us? And this free-flowing gift imparts to us much more than what was given to us through the one who sinned. For because of one transgression, we are all facing a death sentence with a verdict of guilty. 
But this gracious gift leaves us free from our many failures and brings us into perfect righteousness of God, acquitted with the words, not guilty. Death once held us in its grip, and by the blunder of one man, death reigned as king over humanity. But no, how much more are we held in the grip of grace and continue to reign as kings in life, enjoying our regal freedom through the gift of perfect righteousness in the one and only Jesus, the Messiah. In other words, just as condemnation came upon all through one transgression, so through one righteous act of Jesus' sacrifice, the perfect righteousness that makes us right with God and leads us to a victorious life is now available to all. One man's disobedience opened the door for all humanity to become sinners. So also one man's obedience opened the door for many to be made perfectly right with God and acceptable to him. So then, the law was introduced into God's plan to bring the reality of human sinfulness out of hiding. And yet, whenever sin increased, there was more, more than enough of God's grace to triumph all the more. And just as sin reigned through death, all, so also this sin-conquering grace, this sin-conquering grace, will reign as king through righteousness, imparting eternal life through Jesus, our Lord and Messiah. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord, everyone. Let's lift our hands and thank the Lord for his grace tonight, his blessings, his goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you, we thank you, Jesus.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Grace and peace be unto you. So good to be in the house of God tonight. I would like everyone who is happy to be in the house of God tonight to jump up and let us sing this song maybe two times. Glad to be in God's service one more time. Praise God. I'm glad to be God's servant. I'm glad to be God's servant. I'm glad to be God's servant. One more time. He didn't have to make you live. He didn't have to make you live. But I'm glad to be God's servant. One more time. And it's by His grace we are here tonight. And I would like to welcome all our visitors here tonight. So good for you to be here with us. It's rainy, it's wet outside, but you came here tonight. I would like all our visitors to stand. All our visitors, just stand. We would like to acknowledge you. It's so good to see all of you. I'm going to call some names I have here of some special visitors. We have here co-pastor Paulette Faulkner of First United Tabernacle International Ministry. God bless you. We have here, this looks like is Erki or Elki Bailey, E. Bailey with us tonight. And Sister Almarine Foster, she's back. She's been, with, been away for a while. Sister Foster, good to have you back with us. Thank you. God bless you. And we would also like to welcome our Facebook viewers. God bless you. Okay, this is our announcement for the period Thursday, October 11 to, Friday, to Sunday, October 14. Tomorrow... At 6.30, our Jubilee service continues. And on Saturday at 5 p.m., we'll be having our Grace Building Fund launch and fellowship. So we're asking everyone to bring an extra for our building fund. Amen? And on Sunday, our Jubilee service climaxes at 9 a.m. right here at the Micro University College. Members are encouraged to participate in our Bible reading schedule for 2018 on the theme, Grounded in Grace. And today we are at John chapter 19. So encouraging everyone to continue and we're reminding those that we are now at John chapter 19. Please be reminded also that parking each night for our Jubilee services is on the field next to the gymnasium. And we are asking kindly that our visitors and members comply. We know it's a little wet over there because of the rain, but we would really appreciate if you would just comply with, with um, the, the, the announcement. Members are being reminded that food will be on sale for $350 and $500 on Saturday after the Grace Building Fund launch. The funeral service for the son of Brother Robert Farkison will be held at the Four Square Gospel Church, 
Torrington Bridge, that's 163 Orange Street, Kingston, on October 14 at 1.30 p.m. A bus will be leaving the Micro University College after the service on Sunday for those who are interested. The cost is $900, and you can contact Sister Judith Penny or Brother Ferguson if you are interested. Attention! All married couples in the house are being reminded of the day night out. If you are interested, please contact Sister Carrie Ann Chambers. Sister Carrie Ann, can you stand? Some person may not know who you are. She is. So that's Sister Carrie Ann for anyone interested in the date night. So God bless you. Have a blessed week and have a wonderful night in the Lord. Praise God. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. If you're happy and you know it, and you really, really want to show it, put your hands in your pocket, take out your offering, and say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. So you know what time it is, right? What time it is? No, 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 you're wrong. What time it is? No, 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 no. All right, hold on. Were you here last night? If you were here last night, just wave your hand in the air. All right. Did you, got, did you get a chance to hear what the message says? You heard what the preacher said? So what time it is? No, no, no. It's worship time. It's just a different segment of our worship. Amen? Now, while I was sitting there, I, I thought to myself, if I could give my best, my very, very best, would it be just worship alone? Or would I want to add to that worship? And so if I had all that I could give, and I really want to express to the Lord, though I know everything that I have already belongs to the Lord, but I understand that what I have to give, I am just doing it in worship. So could I ask us all to stand? And I'm not trying to, to force you to do anything, but can I just ask us, we, we sing this little song, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. I want us just to close our eyes. And I want us to think of the goodness of Jesus. And I want us then now just to lift our hands and just to say, Lord, in this moment, I want to honor you with all that you have blessed me with. And whatever you want me to give, I'm going to come out of my seat and I'm just going to give it. I'm not going to be prompted. I'm not going to be forced. Whatever you lay upon my heart to give, that's all I'm going to give. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Give us unto the Lord. Tonight we are marching. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Did you come to worship the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Heading for that jubilee. Yonder in the sky Oh, what singing Oh, what shouting On that happy morning When we all shall rise Oh, what joy 
glory. Hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior, first one again, some glad morning we shall see Jesus to be here. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Heading for that new beauty, thunder in the sky. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior. With all the heavenly hosts, we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heaven will ring. In us there will join the star, where is that we shall be? Praising Christ through ages long, and us to His Oh, what singing! Oh, what shouting! Oh, 
sing cheer my comrades cheer you know there are no political connotations everybody can sing that song you know cheer my comrades cheer amen amen what a wonderful feeling what a great atmosphere please be seated we just want to welcome everybody who is here we know you have been welcomed already but um we're just very happy to see everybody all our guests we are very very happy to see you whether you have come from far or near amen um my good friend is here brother bertram henry where are you brother bertram henry I know you're here somewhere. He's here somewhere, Brother Bertram Henry. There he is. Let's clap our hands for him. Amen. Just so good to see him. And um, we have coming all the way from Orange, New Jersey, Lady Paulette Faulkner from First United Tabernacle International Ministries. Stand up again, Lady Faulkner. Amen. Let's clap our hands. Welcome her. Amen. That's the wife of Bishop Lloyd Faulkner. And we're just so happy to see her. We were with her just a few weeks ago at the wedding of her precious daughter. And we're just so delighted that she is here. And we have our very good friend, Bishop. Benjamin Brown. What can we say about Bishop Brown? Bishop Brown has always been a great supporter. And we're just delighted that he's here. And Bishop, you couldn't come here without saying a word. Please just come and greet us. Jump up, jump up, Bishop. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Tonight I want to honor the Spirit of God. Amen, who's the head of my life. Then I want to take time out to greet your wonderful pastor, Pastor John Bartlett and First Lady. Then I want to greet our guest speaker. Amen, also Lady Faulkner, whom I acquainted with. Then all the wonderful saints in the wonderful name of Jesus. Tonight I'm thanking God 
for saving grace. For the Bible said by grace he has saved through faith, not of yourself, but it's a gift of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All the precious people who came with Bishop, would you stand, please? I, I, yes, 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 yes. Amen. We're just so happy to have Bishop with us. And then our great friend and brother, uh, Pastor Colin Sterling. Um, you could not tell by how we look. But we have been friends for uh, close to close to 40 years. Amen. Before we were saved, we used to go to the school just over the fence there. Amen. A school that is older than the United States of America. Founded in 1729. Does anybody know the name of that school? All the Wolmerians in the house. But we're we're really happy to have to have Pastor Sterling with us. Just a great friend, a great supporter, a real brother. I, I can't say too much. And um, just last week, we were with him at his great convention in Turks and Caicos Islands and had such a great time. And his wife, Sister Edna, is here, but she's not feeling all that well, so she had to stay in uh, her hotel. But we are just so happy to have you pastor would you come please and just leave a word of greeting with us amen he and i got up to a lot together back in the day yes he looks like he's saved now but uh brethren Sister Karen Mullings was on that trip with us. And I just need to tell you that when we were coming back to Jamaica at the airport in Providenciales, after we had cleared customs and I was sitting in the waiting area, I saw a little commotion. And I went to investigate. And to my surprise, it was Sister Karen. A knife was taken from her. An army knife. She was going on the plane with a knife. Pastor Sterling was there. He had to come and take the knife away. They had to call the pastor. So when she sings, were it not for grace. She'll probably sing it before the conference is finished. But you will understand why. Pastor, would you come and greet us, please? When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, my soul cries out my soul cries out i think we need to start thinking a bit more anybody here have hands that can wave eyes that can see ears that can hear legs that can move you can breathe in and breathe out. You can hug somebody. So when I think of the goodness of Jesus.
choir is ministering to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Let's just continue to worship the Lord. Lift our hands and worship Him. Last night we heard that when God gets high, miracles can happen. Are you anticipating your miracle tonight? Is somebody anticipating their miracle tonight? Do you know that He's just that kind of God tonight? Whatever you need Him to be, He can be it for you tonight. Hallelujah. This is worship Him tonight. Hallelujah. Able to handle any situation he's Jehovah Nisi Able to heal all my diseases he's Jehovah Rofa Able to comfort in the time of need he's Jehovah Shalom Able to supply all of my needs. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's just that kind of God. He's just that kind of God. He's just that kind, kind of God. Do I got a witness in the house tonight? Able to handle any situation, he's Jehovah Nisi. Able to heal all of my diseases, he's Jehovah Rophi. He's able to comfort in the time of need, he's Jehovah Shalom. He's able to supply. All of my needs, he's Jehovah Chira. He's just that kind of God. He's just that, just that kind of God. He's just that kind, kind of God. Come on, choir. Oh, won't you testify? Somebody say, He's able. Jehovah Nisi is He's able to comfort He's Jehovah He's able to supply That's why He is Jehovah Lord of hosts. 
chest. I remember the time I was sick in my body and he healed me. Yes, he did. He comforted me. He's able to supply.
to just that kind of God. Nobody like him. That's the part I really like. Nobody like him. Nobody like our God. Hallelujah. Nobody like him. Have you ever thought about your God? Just recently, I was praying and I said to him, what were you doing before you created heavens and the earth? What were you doing? Or as our preacher said last night, what were you doing before you created eternity and stepped into it? My God. Amen. Just slip your hands up. And just, just magnify that kind of God. Just that kind of God. So happy to see Pastor Barnes, Pastor G. Oliver Barnes, just coming in. He, his flight was delayed, and he just had time to go to his hotel and turn right back. And I thought maybe he would just take a night off, but he's here. He's just that kind of man. We'll certainly hear from him before our jubilee is over, but tonight is time for the word. And uh, what a word we heard last night. I'm still running it through my mind. and It's still reverberating. Yes, 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 yes. Tonight, the lot has fallen on our great friend, Amen, Minister Mark Brown. And um, it's just fitting that he should be here uh, to minister in the first Jubilee service for the Grace Workshop Ministries. Amen. He ministered for us on another momentous occasion around the same time last year. And um, so what he closed he has to open and he's our great friend a gospel preacher amen we're we're kind of trying just to ensure that the preachers who preach here are gospel preachers you know folks you could preach for 30 40 years and never preach the gospel that's the truth you could preach for years and never preach the gospel but we heard the gospel last night, didn't we? We heard the gospel last night. I'm just trying to recall some of what I heard. God knows that we don't know what to pray for. So he prays the prayer in us. He answers the prayer. He sends the answer. And then he tells us, well done. Uh, he's just that kind of God giving us credit for what he did we love brother mark brown come sir and just come and preach the gospel and if you feel like singing before that's fine now folks while he comes um elder campbell has some dvds and cds on sale and um, we don't work in U.S. dollars here in Jamaica. You don't have U.S. dollars. But if you could give us a thousand Jamaican dollars for the DVD and 600 Jamaican dollars for the CD, you'll be all right. All right, folks. Sister Barbara and the ladies have them back there. We don't want him to leave with any of them. All right. 
as brother mark comes just like we did last night would you slip your hands up and say god whatever you say to me i'm going to do it just 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 close your eyes and make that promise to god come on let's clap our hands for the lord jesus everybody Before you're seated, can you please just turn to one or two people, hug them and tell them, I love you, I love you. That's a lot of love. Praise God. Let's clap our hands one more time and give God some praise. Amen. You may be seated if you can. It's so good. To be in God's house tonight and to be in the fellowship of the saints. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. A great, big, wonderful God. He's always victorious. Always watching over us. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people. The sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations amen come on let's make him high make him high make him oh, make him high glory to God so glad to be here tonight and so honored to have been asked to share in this time of jubilee celebration with you all amen I just honor the lord tonight and thank him for his traveling mercies and for his blessings towards me amen anytime you get up in a plane and come down at the right time it's time to give god praise <laughs> amen amen in the past few weeks i've been in so many different places and Amen. And just sometime get home for a day and fly out the following day. Amen. I was in England for about 11 days and came home for a day. Then went to Calgary for another six to five days, came home for a day. And now I'm here for another few days. Amen. And my pastor asked me the other day, how you doing? See a traveling man. I said, I'm going to do all I can while I can till I can't do it no more. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'm glad to be here tonight and certainly honored to be among God's people. Amen. So glad to be here with my big brother and preaching partner. Amen. Dr. Rick Soup Campbell. What a blessing he is to the body of Christ. His darling wife, Lady Denise. Amen. We were just having a good time together and um, they're really spoiling us and I give God the praise for that. Amen. And to, amen. Uh, so glad to see Bishop G. Oliver Barnes walk in. Amen. From Fort Lauderdale. I've known him ever since I have since. Amen. Long. I knew him when he had hair. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so good to see him. Amen. And uh, of course, the Pastor Sterling and Amen. Bishop Brown and Co Pastor Faulkner looking beautiful as ever. Amen. God bless you and to all of you in your respective places. And of course, to Lady Lisa. 
Amen. Always beautiful, always smiling. Amen. Give God thanks for her. What a woman of God. Amen. And of course, to my good friend, amen, Pastor John Mark Bartlett. Amen. What a blessing he is. Amen. What a blessing he is. I said, what a blessing he is. I said, what a blessing he is. Amen. So I honor him tonight and thank him for this opportunity of uh, speaking to you tonight. Amen. Um, be not dismayed. Whatever, whatever be times, God will take care. His wings of love, love abide. God will take care of, of you. God will take care of you through every day. Take care of you. God will take care of, of you. I trust in God. I know He cares for me on mountains bleak or on life's stormy seas, though pillows roll, he keeps my soul, my heavenly Father watches over me, I trust in God, wherever I Father watches over me. He makes the rose an object of his care. He guides the eagle through the pathless air. And surely he, he, he remembers me. My heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God. I know He cares for me. On mountain bleak or on the stormy sea. Watches over me. That's why I sing. Because woo, I'm happy. I wish I had another witness here. Oh, I sing. I sing because I'm free. Oh, oh, oh his eye is on. The sparrow, and I know he watches me. Take it up, okay? Oh, I sing. 
sing. I sing because I'm happy. I sing. I sing because I'm free. Yeah, his eye is on the sparrow and I Me. So let the church say yeah. I say yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. Say yeah. Oh, say yeah. Lift your hands, say yeah. Somebody say yeah. If you love the Lord, shout yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say it, say it, ah, say it. For the next few moments. I'd like for you to stand with me and turn your Bibles to the book of First Samuel, the first book of Samuel. First Samuel chapter 1. And I want to read a few verses of Scripture there, and I also want to read a few verses of Scripture from chapter 2. First Samuel chapter 1. Amen. It's not too far up in the Old Testament. Amen. It's east of Ruth and west of 2 Samuel. Amen. The first book of Samuel, chapter 1. If you found it, please say amen. Now there was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zoph, and Ephrathite. And he had... Two wives, that's trouble already. The name of the one was Hannah, and who was the other one? Penina, Panina, Tomato, Tomato. And Panina had children, but Hannah had another trouble already, another trouble. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli. Hophni and Phinehas, there were some bad boys, the priests of the Lord were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy or a double portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. Another problem. This scripture is full of problems. And her adversary also provoked her sore or severely for to make her fret. For the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest that sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, uh, when she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head and as it came to pass as she continued to pray the Lord to the Lord that Eli marked her mouth now Hannah she spoke in her heart only her lips moved but her voice was not heard therefore Eli thought she had been drunken and Eli said unto her how long will you be drunken put away your wine from you and Hannah answered and said no my Lord I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink but have poured out my soul 
before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee your petition that thou hast asked of him. Amen. Now, I want to tell you, um, before I get to chapter 2, uh, that uh, Hannah had the baby. She had the baby, praise God. Now, let's go to chapter 2. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, after Hannah had this baby, listen to what she says in chapter 2, verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies. That means he's making me smile real big over my enemies. Because I rejoice in thy salvation. There's none holy as the Lord. There's none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Jump down to verse 6. Look at what she's praying here. Look at what she said. Look at the revelation here. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave. He brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he hath set the world upon them. Can you say amen? amen? Now, after we just read all of that, go back with me to chapter 1. You know, Hannah, he gave a worthy portion to. He loved Hannah, but the Lord shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore to make her fret. Verse 6, because the Lord had shut up her womb. I want to preach to you tonight for the next few moments that the Lord helps me. Amen. Tell your neighbor beside your neighbor. God is in control. Amen. That's what I want to preach for the next few moments. Amen. God is in. Come on, somebody shout. God is in control. Amen. Father, help us now as we approach your word. Anoint me to do what is pleasing in your sight as an oracle according to the ability that you've given me. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Amen. You can join the rest of them seating. Amen. Somebody shout, God is in control. You know, uh, as I was hearing the preaching last night and kind of considering what I was going to preach tonight, this was actually on my mind, and I felt like, you know, Dr. Campbell was just walking all over it, all up and down it, and I was like, well, maybe I should just come up here and say, y'all heard what he said, y'all get up in and pray, but amen, since I have to preach, I'm going to preach anyway, amen. Tell somebody beside you, God is in control. You know, over the past couple of years, and really, honestly, it's been over the past couple of decades that I picked up a little book, and it really has set the trajectory of my theological perspective, amen, for the last 20 years, and it's a book by uh, Arthur Pink. He's probably one of my favorite writers. Um, all my favorite authors are dead, amen, because they weren't writing for book deals, and they didn't have no cable or nothing to distract them, so they really got deep. And so when I read him, it was a book called The Sovereignty of God, and it really caught my attention because it began to, in my mind, it began to move me away from self-centeredness to God-centeredness. It began to let me know that God is actually God, that God is actually all-powerful, that he is actually in control. And, and the kind of Christianity we see today that's popularized, the really, it, it seeks to really kind of deify humanity and humanize deity. It, it, it kind of tries to bring God down to our level when in fact we should be seeking for God to lift us up to his level. To, to, to understand that our praise can't manipulate God and our prayers can't manipulate God and our service can't manipulate God. If we're doing anything for God, it must be by God, through God, for him, for his honor and for his glory. Even when we pray, even after we pray, I mean, the first thing we, we're told in when we pray is that after we have hallowed him and called him our father, the first petition that we pray for is thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So before I even ask for forgiveness of sins or for daily bread or for not going into temptation or being delivered from the evil one, my first priority in prayer ought to be to get the will of God because I'm not in control. God is in control. 
Even when we pray, sometimes we say if we praise God, he'll do that and the other. If we praise him, he'll do this and the other. There might be some truth to that. But to be honest with you, whether God does anything or not, he is worthy of all our praises. By the mere fact you're inhaling and exhaling, let everything that, I wish I had help right now, let everything that hath breath, you still have an obligation to praise the Lord. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth forth his handiwork and everything in creation is giving God glory and so much more ought to be the crowning piece of his creation ought to wake up every day and say, God, you are great and greatly to be praised and marvelous are you. Oh, that men would praise don't mess with me son amen and so we have to understand amen that God is in control I have to believe God is in control because if God is in control he's not God if God is not almighty if God is not all-powerful he's not God by definition he has to have everything under his power there's no maverick molecule in the universe there's no proton there's no neutron there's no electron that is without God's grasp to ability or his ability to manipulate and control God is not at the edge of his throne biting his nails trying to figure out what's going to go on in his universe all things are upheld by the word of his power and whatever he says must come to pass and many are the plans in a man's heart but only God's purpose will prevail his counsel will stand God is in control somebody say God is in control amen that's why I'm confident when I pray I pray to a God who has everything in if I didn't think God could change anything why would I pray to him I pray to God because he has the power to do anything what's impossible with me is possible with God and I'm so glad I serve a God that I don't have to polish and I don't have to prop up and I don't have to fix and I don't have to carry around I serve a God David said amen I'm glad I soon don't serve a God who has eyes but can't see and ears but can't hear and feet but can't walk and hands but can't bless that's not the God we serve we serve the all-powerful almighty sovereign omnipotent God who's great and does what he wants to win he wants to how he wants to and none can stop him and none can hinder him and none can deter him he is God and his people shall be willing in the day of his power my God my mama used to sing a song when God gets ready Lord help me here you have to move you might be rich you might be poor you might be high you might be low you might be black you might be white you could be all polka dot but when God gets ready you have to move <laughs> come on encourage somebody beside you tell them God is in control and whatever God says must come to pass and I come to find out that God does what he wants to do and amen and he and what he doesn't want to do is also a part of his will some sometimes we we you know we trust God when he does it and then another time we don't trust God so much when he doesn't do it but I've come to find out that God not doing is as purposeful as him doing and I can trust him when he does it and trust him when he doesn't do it because he has a reason why he does it God I feel like preaching here and he has a reason and why he doesn't do it but whether he does it or not it's for his glory and for my good lord help me in here that's why the scripture said all things that's a god that's in control that's a god that has power in his hand all things work together for good to them that love god and are the call all things what how many things all things the good things the bad things the nice things the ugly things the sweet things the sour things the, the right things the, the wrong things the up things the down things the, the mountain things the valley things i don't care what thing it is all things
things. I wish I had some help on my monitor. I'd preach a little better. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, everything. I don't care what I go through. I serve a God that's big and bad enough to make it work out for my good. He's in control of the good things and he's in control of the bad thing. That's why I don't have to give the devil any praise. The devil, the devil can't get no praise from me. Because even anything the devil does, the devil is just a tool. He's he just a piece of equipment in the hand of God. God has the devil on a chain and sometimes he let him loose like a bad dog. But when he gets ready, he just yank that chain and say, get back devil your job is over because he'll use even the devil to enact his goodness what kind of God is this somebody lift your hand and say he's in control yes 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 in a very real sense God has foreordained amen everything that is that might be an, a, a rough concept to consider but the truth of the matter is that God has decreed in himself from all eternity by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will freely and unchangeably all things whatsoever comes to pass that's the Westminster Confession of Faith chapter 3 paragraph 1 God has foreordained all things that have come to pass now you might get nervous and say how could that be what about the evil that's in the world what about the wrong things that happen and then you're stepping over into the uh, into the thought area of what they call theodicy explaining evil in the light of God's goodness and we have people People trying to indict God for not being a good God by allowing so much evil but can I tell you that God allows evil in order to be the backdrop on which he works his good I wish I could help somebody here amen the reason there's evil is because God wants to show how good he is the reason there's sickness is is because God wants to show how much of a healer he is. The reason there's death is because God wants to show he's the resurrection. You're getting it my brother. And the life. Clap your hands if you know God is in control. Let me get to my text before I get lost. God is sovereign. So somebody say God is sovereign. He's in control of everything. God, God is sovereign. When we say sovereign, we're talking about the supremacy of God. We're, we're talking about the kingship of God. We're talking about the godhood of God. When, when we say God is sovereign, it's to declare that God is God. He's the most high. Oh, I love it. Can and lift him high one more time amen he's the most high lord i don't care what's coming in your life and trying to swallow you up it can't get higher than my god the most high doing according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth so that none can stay his hand or none can say unto him what are you doing can't nobody ever look at god and say what are you doing are you mad as my pastor here would say are you crazy lord help me in here nobody has given to him that he has to pay you back because before you got here god was loving himself and worshiping himself and blessing himself he only give us the opportunity to get in on the plan but before you got here and after your long gone god is still god i wish you clap your hand and say he's sovereign none can thwart his purpose amen and i like to say that even the irresponsibility of man cannot thwart the sovereignty of god even when you don't know what you're doing god still has a way to make you do what he wants you to do when he wants you to do it because 
because he's God. Isn't that why you're here tonight? Isn't that why you're saved tonight? It's because there's a God that has the power to save. I feel like I might preach this Sunday, but can I give you a preview tonight? In Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, I always looked at the scripture when he said, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And you know the people of the name, we shout and dance, yes Jesus. Bread when I'm hungry, Jesus. Water when I'm thirsty, Jesus. Lily of the valley, Jesus. Bright and morning star, Jesus. But it's the next clause that blows my mind for he shall save his people so God says I'm sending my son into the world not to make salvation possible but to do a work that is certain because when God wants to save can't nobody stop God from saving. Lord, help me in here. Lift your hand and say, God is in control. And so my story tonight has to do with the premise of the sovereignty and the control of God. Because what we have here is, is Elkanah having two wives. And whenever they were ready to go to the temple, amen, for their time of worship, amen, Amen. at the year's time amen to sacrifice to God these two wives were in contrast and the reason they were in contrast is because Penina had children but Hannah had no children now Penina her name means jewel j-e-w-e-l jewel and when you look at a jewel reverend you can already see that it is something of worth something to be valued something to be cherished it is obvious at of the minor or the mere observation that this is something that has value and when you looked at Penina Penina and you saw her coming with her bountiful children understand that in those days to not have children was seen like a curse because God promised them if you're obedient to me you'll be blessed in the fruit of your womb children were seen as a blessing from God blessed is the man that has his, his quiver full of them because children are an heritage of the Lord and so Penina was looking good always fruitful anytime Elkanah looked at Penina too hard she had to get a test y'all know what I'm talking about here I told my wife the same thing I said baby I'm such a good farmer that if I look at you too hard you gotta run to the grocery store Lord y'all don't hear what I'm saying here amen Panina was fruitful and Elkanah wasn't shooting any blanks so we know that Elkanah was not the problem in the text she looked blessed she looked prosperous every year she's got a new baby oh but poor Hannah and listen ain't no competition like a competition between two women y'all ain't got to sing nothing oh God help me get here ain't no, ain't no they're in competition even when they're not in competition Lord help me in here I know I'm gonna run out of here but ain't no competition like two women competing for the affection of a one man and Hannah was in trouble because she had no children but guess what the name Hannah means Lord I feel like preaching here amen guess what Hannah means Hannah in the in the Hebrew it means grace oh you heard it saints her name means grace now what do you do when you know grace is on you but a nothing in your life looking like grace is on you but what I found out from God is that the 
people he most lavishes his grace on are those who are seeming they're most likely to not even make it Lord help me in here when he pours out his grace he don't do it to people amen that feel like they have it all together but God gives grace to the humble but he sees the proud I wish I was preaching in a Bible reading church here the far off and so God amen was looking at this woman her name somebody say grace we know grace is the unmerited favor of God and a simple definition can say that it speaks amen of the sovereign and saving favor of God that he bestows upon those who have no merit in and of themselves for which no compensation is demanded it is completely unmerited it is unsought and it is altogether unattracted by anything in or from or by the objects upon which it is bestowed that means when God puts grace on you it has nothing to do with what you can do but everything to do with what he wants to do through you Lord help me in here when grace comes it doesn't look for anything to help him the only thing you can do is receive what God is pouring out do I have any recipients tonight that say if it had not been for grace I wouldn't be here right now if it had not been for grace I'd be walking on the street somewhere if it had not been for grace I would have lost my mind but amazing grace how sweet the sound that saves a wretch somebody shout grace 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 God's grace grace that can pardon and cleanse within grace God's grace and so grace was on this woman yet the problem of the text is not Penina the problem of the text is not Elkanah but the problem of the text is God God is the problem in this text what are you talking about preacher because the Bible said in verse 5 that when he would give her a worthy portion he loved her so much but the Lord had shut up her womb and then here comes Penina making matters worse making her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb Lord help me what do you do how do you give God all when what you really want from God he denies it from you I wonder if there's anybody in here that's ever been in a position where you tried all you can you know grace is on your life but everything you want to do you think you ought to do is not getting done but can I tell you that doesn't mean that there's any less grace on you as a matter of fact I think it takes more grace to remain faithful under pressure when you're not getting where you want to be than it does when everything is going your way I wish I could preach to some real people here for what this church has been through it couldn't be anything but the grace of almighty God it couldn't have been anything but the sovereignty of all Almighty God it couldn't have been anything but the providence of Almighty God and God said you're preaching grace I'm gonna let you see that my grace is sufficient enough for you it will keep you in rejection it will keep you from depression it will keep you when friends turn their back on you it will keep you when once those who used to love you now talk about you but grace has a way of lifting you higher than your enemies higher than your devils 
somebody shout grace somebody shout grace and so the bible does not let us know because when the bible said that her womb was shut it does not attribute it to any kind of physical condition yeah we don't know if it's endometriosis we don't know if it's problem with ovulation we don't know if her fallopian tubes are mangled we don't know if fibroids was an issue ovarian cysts we have nothing but the fact that God, oh, I feel like preaching here. Can I tell you something? That even though she may have been able, if possible, to get a diagnosis, it would not matter because only God has the power to bring life. So no matter what the problem was, it was never too hard for God to handle. And can I tell you something tonight? That whatever your impediments may be, at the appropriate time God has the power to move every impediment every obstacle and everything against you out of the way because he's in control can you lift your hand and say thank you and so what I see here is that the Lord shut up her womb and the scriptures always seek to attribute the situation of their lives to the divine sovereignty and the providence of God so there was always this worldview that God is in control if I'm sick God is in control if I'm well God is in control if I can pay my school fee God is in control if I can't pay my rent I wish I was preaching to somebody here God is in control somebody say God is in control and so God withholding his hand is as purposeful as God stretching forth his hand because truthfully while we see Penina having fun with her babies we see Hannah getting close to God oh Lord help me in here while we see Penina boasting about her blessings it was Hannah that was going into the temple and finding a place to pray because one thing I found out about grace it doesn't push you from God it brings you closer to God and if grace is really grace it doesn't make you sin more but it says where sin abound grace does much more abound if I know anything about grace the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men teaching us I wish I had some help in here because grace doesn't make you sloppy grace doesn't make you messy grace doesn't make you nasty but grace makes you stand in awe of your creator and shout God oh for grace to trust you more yes and so this woman was in trouble but she went over and talked to God I like what Spurgeon says there is no attribute more comforting to his children than that of God's sovereignty under the most adverse circumstances in the most severe trials they believe that sovereignty has ordained their afflictions and that sovereignty overrules them and that sovereignty will sanctify them all and so she understood that even though I'm in this predicament I know I'm still under the hand of my God and if I pray to him long enough whatever I need will come to me but his grace is sufficient for me and one thing I'm glad about with Hannah is even though God had shut up her womb he didn't shut shut up her mouth Lord help me in here come on sound man give me some more here even though God had shut her womb she still knew how to pray to him and say Lord it's me standing in the need of prayer and can I tell you something if things are shut in your life it's not for you to come 
complain and get bitter. And one thing she did that I admire is she did not waste time with Penina. Lord, help me here. She didn't waste time trying to fight Penina. She didn't waste time trying to be in competition with Penina. Because Penina can't make her have any babies. She went to the one that had power to deliver her from her condition. Is there anybody here that says I've got grace enough to keep on praying? I've got grace enough to keep on praising. And though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Like Job, I will say, the Lord giveth. Come on, sound man, help me out here. The Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. I might not have a baby, but I'm still going to church. I might not have what I want, but I'm still going to pray. I might not have what everybody else has, but it won't hold back my devotion, my consecration, my allegiance to God. I'm going to cry until he hears me. I'm going to pray until he answers me. I'm going to shout until he lifts me. I'm going to hold on until he blesses me. Now look at the revelation of her suffering. Because in chapter 2, look at what she sees here. After the baby comes, she says, the Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and he brings up. He makes poor and he makes rich. He brings low and he lifts on high. Which simply means that at whatever state I'm in, it doesn't matter. Because God is in control of the outcome. So I've learned that no matter what state I'm in, therewith to be content because God is in control of my life. He knows my frame. He remembers that I'm dust. The hairs of my head are numbered. So I'm not going to give time to Panina over there with all her children. I'm going to go talk to God and pray to him and talk to him. And if God shuts the door, I'm going to praise him in the hallway until another one opens up. I wish I had some help in here. If God turns me down, it's not going to stop my praise. If God says no, it's not going to stop my yes to him. Because I've learned that God knows better than me. God is in control of me. And he knows what's best for me. Somebody clap your hands if you hear what I'm saying. So her impediment and her barrenness was not insignificant nor was it arbitrary because the bible said the lord shut up her womb now sometimes in church we look at people going through and think they must have done something wrong why god is not blessing them in a particular way but you need to cut that foolishness out because what I see God doing sometimes is allowing severe circumstances to assail his children. Because he said, if you suffer with me, Lord help me in here. If you suffer with me, you'll reign with me. If you learn how to stay humble yourself under the mighty hand 
Lord, help me in here. Say, humble yourself. Tell your neighbor, humble yourself. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. There's a man in St. John chapter 9. And when the disciples saw him, this man was born blind. And immediately, they, they must have been Jamaican, because immediately they asked the question, is who sin? No, man, it's a, it's a family curse. It's a curse, it's a curse. Who sinned that this man was born blind? Him or his parents? Must be something wrong. Look how hard brother so-and-so have it. He must have done something wrong. No, 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 something not right. You know how we get really prophetic in those times. Start prophesying with our discern, I mean our suspicious gifts. Jesus said, no, it was neither him nor his parents. That sinned. That's not the reason that this man is blind. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. You mean God would let a man be born blind from his birth just so he could show his glory? Yes. Because you see, the problem is, you thought it was about the blind man. You thought the story was about Jairus' daughter. You thought the story was about the woman with the issue of blood. You thought the story was about Lazarus. You cannot preach in here. You thought the story was about blind Bartimaeus, they were the star of the show. It's not the gospel of the woman with the issue of blood. It's not the gospel of Jairus' daughter. It's not the gospel of the Roman centurion servant. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the star of the show is always Jesus because he wants to show forth his glory. Can I tell you the miracle of this church, the miracle of the Grace Workshop was not to show how prolific and articulate John Mark is. Can I preach it here? But it's to show how much God cares for his bride. The church of the living God has nothing to do with ABC, DEF, or any organization. But it has everything to do with the power of God being manifested. Because no man controls this church. No deacon, no bishop. But Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain. God is the chief cornerstone. I feel like pushing it a little bit. Don't. Don't. Don't be mad. At Joseph's brothers don't be mad at what 
Joseph's brothers did to Joseph? Because God was controlling them the whole time. Hold on. If I went further in that Westminster Confession of Faith, the language gets a little bit articulate and can be confusing. But basically what it says is that God is never the author of evil. Never the author of evil. But he can allow it to enact what he wants it to do. To fulfill his own purpose. So Judas had to be picked. I wish I had some help in here. He was a part of the plan. So when Joseph's brothers were selling him out, God could have turned their hearts. As we heard last night, we're not serving gentle Jesus, meek and mild. That's not who we're serving. We ain't serving some limp-wristed, sweet. We're serving a Jesus who knocked Saul of Tarsus out when he got ready to save him. We're serving a Jesus who drags people when he's ready to save them. I wish I had some help in here. So... <laughs> The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. God can change the heart of a king to do what he wants him to do. And if he wants the king hard, all he has to do is this. Just back off his influence. Leave him to his own devices. Leave him to his own mess and his own sin. But if God wants to stop a king from sleeping with Abraham's wife, I wish I could preach like I feel it. Abraham was ready. I mean, Abimelech was ready to touch Sarah. And God said, no. Listen, can I tell you something? You think it's every time, you think it's every time you decided to do something and something just turned your heart. You think it's you? I wish I had some help in here. And then when you look back over your shoulder and saw what could have been if you had done what you wanted to do. My God, sometimes we see a shout and we don't know why. <laughs> So don't be angry at Joseph's brothers because God could have turned their hearts. But see, God had a plan in mind. And God can use any tool to enact his plan. He can even use the evil in men's hearts. He can use the jealousy, the envy, the lie and the thief. He can use anything. Judas was a thief. Uh, excuse my language. Judas was a thief. But he used all of that. I wish I could preach here. Do you know some of the same people that sold out Jesus got saved on the day of Pentecost? Because Peter said, with wicked hands, you slew the prince of life. And if the prince of the world had known, you wouldn't have crucified the king of glory. You did it. You were evil. You shouldn't have done it. My God, when they were pricked in her, now God could have pricked them a long time. But God had a plan to get up on the cross. So he let the evil go on, go on. That's why you can't be worried about when people are backbiting in your life. Because there's a reason why God is using them to perfect you and to work out his plan. Because he is in control. So Joseph's brothers sold him out. Matter of fact, they wanted to kill him. But God touched the gauge of Reuben. Is it Reuben? Touched one of them heart and said, don't kill him. Here 
come some men. You, you think those men came by mistake? That was God working out his plan. Because the Bible is not just history. The Bible is his story. I wish I could get somebody here. He's writing his story. And so when they thought they were rid of him, it was for the good of his servant and it was for the good of God's people. Because when the time came and famine hit the land, by this time Zephaniah, that's his new name, was there in regal royal power and they came to him and Joseph recognized them. They didn't recognize him. Now this was the time that many of us... <laughs> And then you got people like Will Smith saying, if you weren't there during my struggle, don't, don't come to me during my success. That's not Bible. I wish I had some help in here. That's not Bible. God reigns on the just and the unjust. If you got somebody that's being your enemy, I saw some, some time on Facebook some time ago, somebody put on Facebook, the post was, it's a, it's a dangerous thing to, to, to mess with a praying man. It's a, it's a dangerous thing to mess with a praying man. And I looked at everybody I was like, hey man, sure enough, you can't mess with a praying man. But I said to them, you know what? If the person is a praying man and you're bothering a praying man, you're in a very good position. Because if they're a praying man, they're a Bible reading man. And if they're a Bible reading man, the Bible said, pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Bless them that curse you. So if you're my enemy, you're in a good position because I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to pray. So when they saw Joseph, I need to quit. When they saw Joseph and they realized it was Joseph, they became fearful. But Joseph had grown up by now. Joseph had been through enough things in his life to know that it ain't man controlling my life. After everything I've been through, it must be God that's controlling my life. From the pit to the prison, from the prison to the palace, who could it be but God that directed my steps for the steps of a good man are ordered. Can you help me preach to somebody beside you and tell them your evil can't control me. Your bad mind can't control me. Your negative words can't control me. You're not in control of my life. But God is the author and the finisher of my faith. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Because nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and I'm persuaded that neither height nor depth nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate So Joseph said, I'm not going to kill you. You didn't realize that you were still in the hand of God. And it's not my power to execute you. Because of what you meant for evil, God meant for good. I want to thank my enemies today. You push me into purpose. I want to thank my enemies today. You caused me to grow. I want to thank my enemies today. You taught me how to pray. I want to thank my enemies today. He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies. He anointed us. My head with oil. My car runneth over surely goodness and 
mercy shall follow me the days of my life touch three people and tell them God is in control what the devil meant for evil God turn it around for my good what the devil made poison God made it medicine he tried to kill me but I shall not die but I shall live to declare the word of the Lord for the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when my enemies when my foes when the wicked try to eat me up they stumble and they fail though in a host I will bless the Lord is there anybody here that says God you're in control shout yeah shout yeah shout yeah Stand with me if you can. Lift your hands all over the building. When you recognize God is in control, you don't waste time with Penina. You talk to God about it. Because God is in control I wish now you'd open up your mouth and with the fruit of your lips offer up a sacrifice of praise come on open your mouth all over the building 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 he's in control he's in control you don't need to get mad you don't need to get even he's in control he's in control he's in control he's in control just surrender humble yourself under the mighty hand of God he will exalt you in due time I wonder if there's anybody here tonight he said, God, there's some things I need to surrender to you. I'm opening up this altar right now. You want to acknowledge the sovereignty of God in your life. Amen. This is an opportunity for you to come down and say, Lord Jesus, you are Lord. You are King. You are mighty. I give this area over to you right now. I've been trying to hold on, but God, I submit it to you. Who wants to come right now? Very quickly right now and say, Lord, I honor you as God. I lift you up as high. You are Lord most high. Have your way, have control, have dominion, have all power. I acknowledge you. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's supreme, he's almighty, he's all powerful. He is omnipotent, the only wise God, our savior. Come on in here. Who wants to say, Lord, I give this to you. I give myself to you. I honor you today. I put everything in your hand. Cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. You're in control. In control of my emotions. Control of my feelings. Control of my habits. Control of my mind. Control of my psyche. Control. Control. You're in complete control. I give it to you, Jesus. Give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, give myself away.
Beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure all of my days are held in your hand. All of my days are held in your hand, crafted in your perfect plan. All of my days. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Is, is that something we believe? All of my days are held in your hand. So when God shuts a door, that's a day that's held in his hand, crafted into his perfect plan. Days of suffering, days of heartache, are as much the will of God as days of victory because he's sovereign that's the message folks that's the message I don't want us to miss this I don't want us to get all excited and miss it I want us to get excited when we understand it and know that tomorrow his sovereignty might allow something to happen to me that might not be nice but it doesn't mean that he loves me any less he's still in control when we have two tires blow out and the car flips over six times he's still in control he's in control when the thieves break into your house. He's in control. Lift your hands and worship him. Hear me now, folks. I really want people who understand this. We're, we're reaching beyond just an emotional high. We're going beyond tongues. We're going beyond tongues and excitement and a shout i want those who understand this 
and you 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 have had your disappointments and you have had your pain and you have had your heartache and you have had a no when you were looking for a yes i want you to come down to this altar and say god i'm going to celebrate your sovereignty in the midst of my pain i know you are god god of the mountain but god in the valley god of the good times yes but god of my bad times oh god oh god we need a church that understands god snuffs out the life of a loved one pulls something precious from my life shuts a door that i thought would be open he's still god his sovereignty is working it couldn't happen if he didn't allow it church needs to understand that and become mature stop flipping around understand god is sovereign and if he didn't allow it if he didn't purpose it, it couldn't happen. I really like for us to sing that beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior. I'm, 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 I'm hoping we understand what God has been saying from last night. Do you see the connection, brethren? You see the connection? I hope you are able to make the link between what Soup Campbell said last night and what Mark Brown said tonight because you see it's God who is talking he's just using men lift your hands and worship God sing us would you help us to sing that beautiful Lord wonderful Savior let God talk to you in your pain beautiful Lord now believe it I know for sure. I know for sure. All of my days. All of my days are held in your hands. Wrapped into your perfect plan. You gently call. To see all, to live all of my through life. Through your life. I'm captured by your calling.
We're going to sing it one more time. We'll, we'll sing it one more time from the top. Millions of people all over the world sing this song and miss the sovereignty of God. It's just a beautiful song for them. They sing it in apostolic churches every Sunday and don't see the sovereignty of God. Miss that God is in control. It's just a beautiful song for them. Crazy. We have to understand all of my days are held in His hand. There's no error, there's no mistake, there's no chance. Oh God, I feel it so strong. Sovereignty of God. Tell somebody beside you, God is in control of what's happening in your life right now. The thyroid problem fibroid problems heart condition problems in the marriage God is in control my God and if we make him high if we make him high we'll see him as we've never seen him before beautiful Lord let's sing sing with understanding It's you who call me into your presence. by your calling not by my choice by your calling to talk to us Lord I know you're trying to get us to understand I know you're trying to take us past an emotional high you're trying to teach us that it is with the mind we serve God taking us past a good feeling in church to where we can understand when we make you high you 
reveal to us that you are in control it's when we exalt you that we can see your control My. just before you go just before you go just make a little circle with two or three persons I don't want you to hold hands across a line I, I want you to look in somebody's face and so we need to get this down. We need to, God doesn't even have to talk to us again. First two nights are enough. He's trying, to, he's trying, God is blowing our minds, friend. He's bigger than your divorce. He's bigger than your separation. He's bigger than your failures. Oh, I know the devil is angry when we talk like that. He's bigger than your mess. His grace is greater than all your sins. He's a miracle working God. Pray for somebody now. Just pray for somebody right now. Call on the sovereign God. Say God show up in our lives. Help us to understand that you have it under control. You've got it. You've got it. You've got it. You've got it. Yes, Lord, you've got it. Have your way in me, Lord. Have your way in us. Have your sovereign way. Rule in my life. You don't have to be in competition with anybody. You don't have to fight with anybody.
Aleluia. 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 if we really believe this would you lift your hands and say Lord I accept your word sovereign God sovereign God sovereign God sovereign God there's a little song we sing I'd like us to just close very simple song that we've sung over the years written by a gentleman who died in 2010 just says Jesus Jesus you know what's best for me lead on Jesus I'll go wherever you lead just sing it a couple of times and then we'll pray and go. Simple song but profound if we can catch it. Children, no children, wife, no wife, husband, no husband, lead on.
without the music now. Thank him for the message. Thank him for the messenger. Spend a little time thanking God. Don't be ungrateful. He sent his word, healed us, strengthened us, reproved us, exhorted us. Tell him thanks. Tell him thanks. There might not be a tomorrow. Tell him thanks for tonight. Lord bless you, brethren. You see how God is leading us now, tomorrow. Uh, let's try and... It's difficult to maneuver in the traffic, especially when it rains. You have to try and get out a little earlier. Amen. Let's try and come early. I know the Lord is going to meet with us tomorrow. I know he's going to talk to us. And I'm... I'm so happy for what God is doing. More than fun. You know, it's, it's a maturation that's taking place. Uh, a developing of the saints. A changing of mindsets. Not just a cheap thrill. Cheap convention thrill. Changing of a mindset. A renewing of our mind as we hear what God says. Greet several people as you go. Hug somebody. Tell them God has it in control. God has it in control. I don't know what you're going through, but God has it. I don't know what you're going through, but God has it. I don't know, but God has it. I'll go wherever you lead.